Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over some of my favorite tools and add-ons uh, that I use in almost every flight, as well as a couple of honorable mentions. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay guys, so in my history of this channel, I have reviewed probably hundreds of apps at this point, if not more than that, um, and as well as add-ons and different tools, but there is only a really short select few that I use in just about every single flight. Um, and so I wanna go over some of those uh, tools with you guys, so that way you can be aware that they're out there, and I'll try to go into why I use them the way I do. So first off, we're gonna start with an oldie but a goodie, and that is MSFS Mobile Companion App. This is an application that basically hosts a web server is all it does, hosts a website that you can access from any mobile device. And it has a ton of features and options. Now you can use this on a tablet or a cell phone are the most common ways that I use mine. Here's an actually perfect example. It's pretty much how I use mine on the tablet. Um, and then over here on the cell phone, you can see the same kind of principle. Now, why do I use this app? I use this app as a content creator. I'm constantly bouncing back and forth between controls. I'll have sometimes my flight yokes out. I'll have the Bravo out. I'll have my throttle um, or uh, my HOTAS, excuse me, from Verpal or the Thrustmaster, which everyone happened to be using at that time. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of quick and easy. What, what gives me all the functionality that I need uh, when I don't feel like doing a full setup? Now, this is also part of the reason why I have been working on building my own cockpit is to alleviate the need for some of this stuff. But when you're very limited on space, apps like these guys are absolutely freaking amazing. They save you a ton of frustration. You have all the neat features of the, uh, at the ease of your fingertips, simple touch screen control, and you can control so much. Now, Mobile Companion app has a couple of limitations given that when it comes to creating like flight plans and stuff, you wanna create your flight plan inside the world map before you load into your aircraft. But once you do, uh, you'll get something like this where you can actually see, oh, that's actually the wrong image. Let me scoot that one over. Give me just a second here. Let's get, let's get it up there. Oh, you can't really see it. It's this line right here. This is your flight path for this particular uh, flight that they've created here. Um, but what's really nice about it is you can have everything from your navigation radios, your comm radios, uh, your nav aids, um, as well as map functions, sim rate control. That is a really big one for me. Um, and when I'm up in cruise and I'm doing these flight recordings, oftentimes I want to speed things up to obviously through the cruise phase uh, to keep the video moving along and you know be able to put out more content and then get back to the things that I want to do outside of flying. Um, and it's just a really, really awesome application. This can be found on flightsim.2 for absolutely free of charge, requires no external hardware other than a cell phone, or if you want, you can actually control this from say a laptop or um, open up another window on your computer in a browser format, just like we're seeing here on a web page, and just use your mouse to uh, mouse and keyboard to control all the different functions. It comes from comes with some specific aircraft controls. I tend to honestly use it in its default form here um, and it does everything that I need to do, but there are some very aircraft specific profiles. Now, unfortunately the aircraft or the application hasn't been updated in quite a while. I hope this developer hasn't given up on this one. Um, I haven't run into any bugs with it, but again, I use it in a very simple format. So, um, and I can tell you that right now, it's as of this, the date of this recording, it still works. Um, I was using it just a couple of days ago. Uh, because I have most of my cool flight controls in my class echo, which we'll talk about in a minute, all di disassembled and taken apart right now uh, for the cockpit build. So anyway, that is mobile companion app, extremely handy application to have guys. Even if you have all the rigs and everything, I highly recommend you at least download it and check it out. I promise you'll find some cool features with it. You'll at least be able to look at it and go, Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Another really neat thing about this particular app is if you want to walk away, like you are in a cruise flight, let's say you are one of those diehard guys who can withstand the 17 hour flights and whatnot. Um, you can actually walk away from your desk and simply pull up the app and you'll be able to see where your aircraft is in relationship to your flight plan. Now, moving to an honorable mention around the same kind of principle as some of these. Now this is, we're, we're basically going through the freeware stuff first. I've got 
quite a few payware stuff that uh, that I want to show off, but uh, a lot of them do cost money. So this is a freeware application called Little NavMap. It is extremely robust. It can do a lot of the same features that we talked about before, um, but it is a flight planning um utility it can do everything from calculating your geographical uh, altitude restrictions you know mountains things like that editing your flight plan has very specific specific profiles for the aircraft that can either be loaded or manually created to help better calculate fuel and weights and balances um, it can do a ton of work it is extremely robust it act uses uh, navigraph data is an option but it can also use the native uh um, nav data from both Microsoft Flight Simulator and X Plane 11. It's got P3D integration as well. It's sort of the all in one. Um, I really highly recommend you guys at least check out this website, look through it, see all the features that are available with it. It is extremely, like I said, extremely robust. It can do a lot. The reason why I don't particularly use this application is I have found some of the other payware applications I find to be a bit more user friendly. Uh, not quite the learning curve. I would absolutely say that little nav map has a pretty steep learning curve but with an application that is completely free of charge and open source um, it is amazing i do not want to take away from the fact that this air that this uh, particular software is a phenomenal piece of software here's a very good screenshot depicting just one of the many pieces of functionality that this thing can do i mean it is endless this is a very very powerful application very powerful guys um, and again, it's free, it's open source. So if you are a developer and have the skills and, and the know-how to contribute, you're welcome to do so uh, via the GitHub. But I mean, this is all wind, windage information. You know, you have, again, your terrain information, your restrictions, uh, recommended flight plan and altitudes based on those altitude restrictions and possible, um, what's what I'm looking for? Not restrictions, obstacles. Um, so it is a very, very, very good application. Very, very good application. But again, for what I do and the way that I like to fly in sim, um, I tend to find it to be a bit a bit more than what I personally need. Um, I am I like to consider myself pretty diehard, but I'm not extremely so. Um, and this application is great for those of you who just really want to get in deep. But again, the learning curve for my personal liking, I think, is a bit steep. Now on to one of my most favorite applications that I use very, very frequently, and that is NeoFly. NeoFly is an awesome third-party application that creates a sort of career mode for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You have NeoFly version three, which is the press release here that you guys can see on the screen. And then there is NeoFly four, which can be found on Discord. You can get access to their beta. And again, completely free of charge. I think, you, I think sorry, it might require a donation. But with that being said, I recommend all of these add-ons. Uh, the add-ons are absolutely fantastic. Um, this is just donation down here, guys. You don't have to do the $50, uh, but any one of these purchase, any of these give a donation of any of these, um, and, uh, you'll get access to the version four beta. Um, it is a really awesome application and truly enhances the flight experience, especially when you're trying to think of things to do when you're trying to fly with purpose, right? Other than just flying from point A to point B, um, NeoFly really gives you a great sense of immersion. It throws some some little uh, hot rocks at you sometimes, you know, you'll be sitting there flying along and all of a sudden you get diverted to a completely different airfield. Uh, you may determine that one of your passengers has a warrant for their arrest or something like that. Um, sometimes there's, uh, you know, you'll be doing a cargo run and you'll get a report that there's people waiting to hijack your load when you get there. So they divert you um, even even more dirty. You know, sometimes you might be doing a uh, cargo run and they'll say they'll come up and say, hey, you have the option. This competitor is saying that if you bring their load your load to you know this other airport they'll pay you double or you can continue on path and do the right thing and you know live up to your contract so it throws a bit you know it's got the option of uh some uh malicious content if you will or criminal content if you will um but it again it's all optional you can turn it all all that off um, but it, and you always get the choice, right? In mid flight, if you get a pop up like that, you can choose to just continue on and, and complete the mission as it was originally planned. So it, it, it's, it's got a lot of voice activation to it or a voice interaction with it. Um, and it just, it really makes the simulator significantly more fun for me. Um, even something as simple as your landings. So if you're carrying fragile cargo, you need to make sure that you're landing. I think the most common one is you need to land at less than 200 feet per minute. So you need to do a really smooth landing, you know, 200 feet per minute. You know, that, that ain't nothing. That's, 
it's really easy to bust that. So it's just things like that, that it does that really enhances the simulator and, and it's fun to progress. You start out with like, if you go to the full, the, the full career mode, right? You actually have the option to custom customize this as well. But I start out with the full career mode where you start out with like a Cessna 152, you know, something very low end, very down at the basics, and then work your way up. Every mission that you fly, you earn money, you can save money, you can take out bank loans. You know, when you take out a bank loan to buy an aircraft, you want to check out the interest. Different airports will have different aircraft options. It just goes on and on and on. And uh, they've done a really good job with it. You can also manually add aircraft in. If you have a third party aircraft that maybe isn't uh, a part of NeoFly, there are ways to add them in. Um, so that way you can continue to use your favorite plane while using your favorite app. Um, I really am a big supporter of NeoFly. I love what it brings to the flight simulation, especially on those days where you know you want to fly, but you don't know what you want to do. You can sort the flight missions based on um, maybe a small bush trip all the way to commercial level flights, you know, cross country flights. Um, there's just a ton of different filters and a ton of different options that really make it uh, a little bit gives you a little bit of everything for everyone, um, all the way from helicopters to, like I said, large commercial uh, to transports to medical emergencies. You know, it, it just it goes on and on. They have a ton of different options. And again, the base model of it is completely free. So I would say download it. Come here, download the NeoFly application, install it, go fly around for a little bit. And actually look at uh, contractors. Oh, yeah. So, it, you know, it'll let you in. Just follow the instructions if you want to be a part of the NeoFly 4 beta. Um, but uh, download it, install it, give it a shot, and uh, um, see what you guys think. And then maybe go back and purchase some of the enhancements. One thing that just caught my attention that I don't have is this. So I'm kind of curious of giving that a shot. You know, we're going to check out some, some firebombing missions. That would be really cool. Um, so anyways, guys, that is NeoFly. Moving on now to some of the... Uh, my favorite apps and tools that unfortunately are behind a paywall, but in my opinion are still absolutely worth their, their money. Um, first one is in a, in a recent update, I just did a video not too long ago, about a week ago on the latest release of sky Force sim with the previous version. It was definitely a hit or miss. You know, you could, you could take it or leave it kind of situation. Uh, ever since the latest update, I have been using this on almost every single flight and I absolutely love it. I have it uh, pulled up on my tablet when I'm using it. It integrates with NeoFly, which is why we just talked about NeoFly. Uh, it integrates with NeoFly version four. So it integrates with the beta. Um, so you have to be on that to use it. But all of your flight planning information, again, same information that we were talking about previously with NeoFly, now populates inside of the Skyforce SimPad. Skyforce SimPad is another very robust application that uh, makes it possible for you to use uh, the satellite imagery from Bing uh, to create your flight plans. It will also give you, again, the terrain avoidance uh, requirements for your altitudes, so it will help you plot your, your best uh, safe altitude in order to, to avoid any terrain obstacles as well as when you look at your flight plan legs there is a way to actually see how the altitude will change so if you need to adjust your altitude from one to the other maybe you're wanting to do a low flight you can still sort of plot that uh, kind of thing out where you can do your, your ground mapping the other biggest thing about this that is absolutely freaking awesome is it was not just optimized for but really designed around virtual reality um, i think this picture here gives a pretty good well not really showing it as well as I'd like, but uh, you can actually pull the tab up in VR and have the same functionality. And then you can also see Pilot ATC inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator, again, designed around virtual reality. So VR players, guys, I have used this in VR. I don't fly in VR very often because normally when I fly Microsoft Flight Simulator, I am sharing that particular flight with you guys. And uh, recording in VR, in my personal opinion, I just don't like the way it comes out for your experience. I don't think it's as crisp. I don't think it looks as nice. And, you know, I obviously want you guys to enjoy my content, which is why I avoid the VR flights on YouTube. Um, so, but I have used this in VR and it works flawlessly. I don't have any issues. It's very easy to adjust the tab location and its size. You can uh, move it around. Um, and then you can also, there's an option to remove the, the uh, default bezeling around the pad uh, that comes when you do a Microsoft uh, flight simulator, when you open up one of the tools, how you get the blue bar up on top. As you can see here, that bar was removed uh, and there is an option. And then to bring it back, you just click a button and, and it's back up and ready for you. So it they, it's a very streamlined, very user-friendly, very, again, robust application. It gives you uh, weather data, live weather data, um, Airport search, radio comms, uh, taxi information, 
Um, all those things got a really awesome notepad that can either be done via a touch screen, you know, if you want to use your finger and, and scribble, or maybe you've got a stylus, or it also has a optional keyboard entry. So you can actually pull up the notes and there's an option of a digital keyboard, which will pop up on the screen, or you can use your physical keyboard depending on how you are using the app. Um, again, very slick. Um, I pulled it up on my phone and my phone's keyboard comes up. So it's very easy to type real quick if you're fast on the phone. Really, really awesome application, guys, and I highly recommend it. Now, the other thing about this, there is a freeware version. I do want to make sure that that is very clear to you guys. I have and recommend the payware version. However, if we come down here to the products, you can see there is a here. We just selected the free version. If we come over here to choose your version, you guys can see the differences between the paywall and the freeware okay so some of the things aren't available pdf applications there is a way to upload your own pdf documents edit pdf documents import images as pdf pages etc cetera, etc cetera. you guys get the gist with the pdfs um so you can also share your flight plans amongst friends and and fellow pilots again that's something that's behind the paywall so there are a few limitations to it but at the same token it's also a very reasonable price. It's not 60 or $70 like some of these other ones that we've seen or 40 or 30 or five, you know, it comes out to just under, I think it was just under 20 bucks, you know, when I bought mine. Um, so a very, very fantastic piece of uh, software that I think, um, again, right up there with like, here's some screenshots of more of the features that I really wanted you guys to see. Um, it really comes down to what you're, what you're doing with the SIM, but uh, it's a tool that I have found myself using more and more and more ever since the latest update of the software. It's a really, really powerful software and I really, really enjoy the way it's laid out. Getting into one that may be a little bit of uh, off the channels here is SPAD Next. I have talked about SPAD Next quite a few times in my history of doing this channel. Um, SPAD Next is not just a controller software. I want you guys to just think about it as mapping buttons to your controls. So let's talk about the SPAD.next benefits first. So first, specifically speaking to Microsoft Flight Simulator, the benefits are is that it has access to many of the control options uh, that the in-game control GUI does not, you know, uh, meaning that you can map more buttons and switches outside of the sim using SPAD than you can inside the sim trying to use the default control scheme. Okay, so for example, when we come here, we go to control options, okay? Um, there are more options inside of SPAD than there are inside of this window here. Oops, it helps if I minimize that. There we go. So there are more options inside of SPAD than there are inside of the actual Microsoft Flight Simulator GUI. Um, so you have more customization options, especially if you're someone who's using like external flight controls. If you're using uh, third party controls, maybe you're like myself, you're building a cockpit, and you've got tons of buttons and switches and you'd really like to dive down deep and map them all and really create that, uh, you know, fully functional cockpit experience at least close you can. A software like SPAD Next or FSUI PC7 is what's going to provide you access to those back end codes uh, that are not available in the Microsoft Flight Simulator GUI. Okay, so that's that's the first part. Second thing is like telemetry information. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, for like creating your own custom gauges. Let's say again, doing custom cockpit. Maybe you bought some custom gauges on Amazon. You know, you know your ADIs, uh, your PFDs. You're trying to do things like that. This gives you the option to integrate those kind of tools with it, as well as some other very awesome third party products, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, but it is goes far beyond just mapping buttons. Now I use it primarily, not solely, but primarily for mapping my buttons. And here's the reason why. First is as we talked about a minute ago, I have more options. I can map many more things. I can get much more uh, customized with my layout. Two is I have found the response of SPAD to be significantly better and more reliable than that of the Microsoft Flight Simulator GUI. Third, it is a lot faster than using the Microsoft Flight Simulator GUI. I hate how long it takes just to map a single button. Now that sounds silly, I'm sure to many of you like, dude, it doesn't take that long. Uh, when you're constantly testing out new controls, new hardware and things like I do, it can get pretty, pretty, yeah, you guys know where I'm going. Annoying to say the least. Um, but I just like the, the layout better. Again, switching profiles is significantly faster. Uh, the, the cool thing about SPAD is it will also remember what aircraft you're flying. So if you set up, for example, a specific set of controls for a uh, Baron G58, and then you go into the simulator, so you've got all your controls all set up, you're going to save that profile. Okay. 
when it comes when you go and then you create another one for a helicopter say the h145 you've got so you got two profiles right now you've got one for the baron 58 and you've got another one for the h145 from that moment on after you save those profiles when you log in Okay, and you start flying the Baron G58. SPAD is going to automatically know you're in the Baron G58. You don't have to manually change your profile. It's going to say, hey, I recognize this aircraft, change it. Um, and then if you, uh, transversely, if you switch over, you're done flying the Baron, you go to the H145. SPAD is going to automatically switch to the H145. Now, the only thing you have to do on occasion is, for example, if you're flying the Baron and you pick it with a different livery, it will ask you, hey, uh, I've noticed that you've got a different livery here. Do you want to use this same profile or do you want to create a different one? You just tell it, yes, use the same profile and boom, you're up and off to the races. Um, and then every time you fly that aircraft with that livery, it recognizes it. You're good to go. Um, the next thing is now that this is, well, here, let's talk about price now, because this is where it's, I will admit it's steep. Um, now what I use is this one here. Okay. Twenty-four ninety-nine uh, euros, and uh, it it works great. Now I have purchased the full version, okay. And the reason being is because of the significance of what it does, and what I like about what it does, and the expansion and the things that they're going with it. I have purchased the full version. Now check this out too. You get two weeks of fourteen day, or excuse me, you get a fourteen day free trial, and it's fully loaded. You are not limited. And that's the other thing I like about it. It is not just a trial. It's not a partial trial. You get full access to the software. Okay. Um, oh, that's kind of cool too. I didn't know about that too. You can also upgrade it without purchasing the next version. Um, so you get 14 days of full use of it. Use it until you can break it, blah, blah, blah. Find out what's good for you. I would recommend, like I said, starting with just the $24.99. Um, and, uh, give it a shot, but I would definitely try at least the 14 days guys. There are a bunch of videos. I've got a bunch of videos on how to set up spad, not next. So just search my channel for it. Just search for spad. And I guarantee you'll find a few where I walk you through how to configure it for the first time and some of the options for you. Um, and I'll be surprised if just like me, you don't find yourself going, wow, this is a hell of a lot better. And I have, excuse me. And I have many more options, uh, to customize my flight simulation experience. The only thing you want to make sure that you do is if you do decide to switch over to SPAD is you would want to come in here and make sure that you create a profile for whatever control you're doing and disable everything. Okay. Delete all of this stuff from whatever control. So for example, you guys, like I said, you guys can tell that I'm, I'm in construction mode. Um, so a lot of this stuff, for example, here, you would see, you see that this is blank. Make sure you do the same thing with whatever control you want to set up in SPAD. You don't want them conflicting because they will. Okay. So that is SPAD next. Oh, I did it again. Gosh, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Here, this is what I'm talking about. This is how Microsoft Flight Simulator should work for what or you look like for whatever control you're wanting to map into SPAD. You want it, you know, create a new profile in, in the preset manager and then just make everything blank. Okay, make sure it's completely disabled in the sim. And then when you go to SPAD, that's where you do your creation. Um, so anyway, sorry, I keep forgetting that you guys can't see it as I click it. Um, but, uh, and with conjunction with SPAD is going to bring us to our next, uh, tool. This is a tool that I have shown you guys multiple times. I have talked about it multiple times. It is called the class echo. Um, the class echo is a little box that can sit on top of just about anything that you want for the longest time. I didn't have it mounted to anything. It wasn't until I built this new cockpit that I'm building that I decided to mount it. Finally, um, normally I would just pick it up or put it, you know, on sticky pads or whatever. Um, but it is an extremely cool tool. Okay. Um, extremely cool tool. Let me see if I can find some better screenshots here of what we've got going on. So here, if we pull this one up here, you can see there is some of the flight information. Now you have everything from your flight information, radio and comms, nav radios, uh, autopilot functionality. Um, what am I missing? Lights, um, engine starts, engine gauges, um, again, simulator speed control. If you want to speed the sim up. Um, there's, I'm sure there's something that I'm missing here, but all of that can be controlled from this little box. This is a touch screen. And then the, it has one encoder by default with a push option as well, um, that you can use to navigate. So use your fingers just to navigate around the different menus, toggle different buttons, toggle your autopilot modes, highlight different boxes. For example, if I want to change my vertical speed, I would select autopilot. 
touch the vertical speed box and then use the rotary to, you know, set the desired altitude. Um, very, very cool tool. Very, very cool tool. Um, and I highly recommend it. Now I do want to make sure that you guys take the time to go thoroughly through it. It is not an all in one set and done. You buy parts of it. Um, and then, uh, there are parts of it that you'll need to pick up on like Amazon, the screen like that. Um, but he walks you through step by step on everything you need to get in order to put this all together. Now, once you put it all together, which by the way, the installation time is maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes, I think is what it took me. It really didn't take me long at all. Uh, it's very simple build. Um, and it's extremely handy. I love having this thing. Absolutely love having this thing. I have been, I was using the mobile companion app because my class echo is currently unplugged and, and down for the moment. Um, but uh, I use this solidly on every single flight, every single flight I do, even with all of my cool buttons, switches, cockpits, builds, everything that I have, I use this thing religiously. And there's some really awesome development coming out of shake print simulations that I can't tell you about yet, but I'm aware of that. I can tell you right now, you guys, his work is awesome and it's just getting cooler and cooler and cooler. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact him. You can also join him on the discord. They have a discord channel. Um, and, uh, he's a really, really good guy and, um, will listen to anything that you guys have to say really, really awesome. And I definitely have no problem whatsoever supporting him in the class echo. The class echo is a absolutely, in my opinion, a must have for every simulator. I promise. Even if you think you already have everything you need, you'll find a reason to use this. It is slick. Next one, I'm sure, is one that you guys have all heard of. It is FS Realistic. Now, FS Realistic is an awesome add-on application that greatly enhances the uh, audio immersion as well as some of the video immersion, but specifically for the audio portion. I highly recommend you guys come to this website, play a few of these videos so you can see it live in action. I've done also a couple of reviews on my channel with it. Uh, we've got another one coming in the next week or so, and I can't tell you why, but I can tell you that it's going to be awesome. Um, might or might not have something to do with this right here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It is a true game changer. I think a lot of simmers, a lot of gamers, whatever you want to call it, do not realize how much we rely on audio for our immersion for to determine for our brains to realize, wow, this is almost real. And a lot of that comes from our auditorial perception. And this enhances that a lot. Everything guys, I, I just can't even begin to go down the list from you can customize just about any sound that you hear in the simulator or maybe any sound that you don't hear in the simulator can be added using this application. If a gear sound sounds wrong to you, you can use this to change it. If the flaps are too loud to you, you can change it. If the flaps don't sound right, you can change them. There's a bunch of different options. Your touchdowns are really lackluster. Like they just don't have that landing gear hitting the ground effect. You can add that camera shake, camera vibration, stall buffet. Um, I can go on a wind, ambient noise, rattles. Um, I can go on and on guys. I'm, I'm trying to keep this, you know, without going on too big of a ramble. It takes a lot of tweaking. Now there's also a cloud access to many other uh, profiles that other end users have created that you have free access to once you purchase the application that you can just download and use something that somebody else has created and maybe just tweak that a little bit. Or you can start from scratch. If you start from scratch, it does require quite a bit of tweaking. There are default profiles that come with the software based on the aircraft you're flying. Um, but if you're willing to take the time for your own customization, um, you know, it, it can, it can be a lot of trial and error, a lot of, okay, backup. Okay. Backup. All right. Try it again. Try it again. Nope. Don't like that. So let's try this one. Now, the beautiful part about that is that you can hear all of the sounds before, uh, you actually put them into action. There's a preview option for every single sound. There are volume controls, um, for, per, per the sound itself, not just for the entire app. Each sound can uh, be individually adjusted. Uh, or its volume can be individually adjusted, I should say. Uh, it is a really awesome application that truly changes the immersion. And again, I fly in 2D because I share my flights with you guys, as I mentioned before. But if you are a VR player, this thing is killer for sound. Killer. Um, you know, virtual reality, you've already got that three-dimensional view. You've got that depth perception. You've got that 360-degree uh, life around you. Uh, get the sounds in there, man. Um, you add the sounds to virtual reality and you guys know, 
you know, the only thing you're missing at that point is tactile feedback, bumps, feelings, your gut going into your chest, you know, but, um, this is a big kicker for virtual reality, big kicker for virtual reality. And it's a big kicker for 2d. I use it on every single flight, every single flight. Um, I have my FS realistic to automatically launch, um, at the beginning of, uh, Microsoft flight simulator. Every time I launch FS, um, uh, or Microsoft flight simulator, FS realistic launches automatically. Um, it is a fantastic application. Um, you know, and now I do not remember off the top of my head how much it is. Honestly, it's been a while since I purchased. So let's go ahead and check that out. Here we are 28 euros for it. Um, that may seem a little steep to some. I do remember when we talked about this previously, that people were saying that, wow, that's, that's uh, pretty expensive. I promise you'll get the value out of it. If you fly on a consistent basis and you take the time to really tweak it and make it, make it yours, you'll get the value out of it. You will absolutely get that, that $28 out of it. Um, and again, for the longevity of it, it's gone through some very significant updates. There's another big one coming. Um, so I do absolutely recommend this one guys. Next, we have our Boeing pilots. This is for you guys. Uh, the Fergo virtual CDU, uh, I was initially given an option to review this application when he first launched it, uh, and then ended up purchasing my own because I loved it that much. And it's exactly what it looks like guys. It is a uh, fully integrated CDU for the PMDG aircraft that you can see there listed down below. But what this gives you the options, again, your cell phone, tablet, second monitor if you choose, however you wanna do it. Preferably, I would recommend something with a touch screen, uh, but I have used this on my cell phone multiple times. It is extremely fast, very seamless uh, with its entries and navigation through the different menus. So, I mean, you can just go bang, 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 bang. As fast as you can get your fingers going, man, this thing's right on it with you. So it makes programming the CDU just a breeze navigating through it, you know, throughout your flights, everything is just really quick. Uh, the response time is absolutely excellent. And the hardware hit is almost non-existent. Um, so you really can't even tell that you're hitting it. And guys, right now it's a whopping $8 us. So I do hope that he comes up with something like this, you know, for some of the other aircraft that are out there. I know uh, flyby wire has one included with their particular aircraft. So, but it would be nice to have a one app that can do sort of everything. I think it'd be cool. But uh, again, that is the Fergo Virtual CDU. Highly recommend this one. Um, I This is another one that I use just about every single time that I go through the uh, 737. All right, guys, be sure to check out the channel for more videos that you guys might be interested in. I am trying to push DCS World a bit more. If you guys can help me out, start grabbing some of those videos, go through the playlist. Maybe you're interested in learning one of the aircraft that I've got uh, tutorials on. I have a almost maximized tutorial list for the F-18 Hornet. Um, as well as some of the other aircraft in there. Um, but uh, as always, guys, stay safe and healthy. I hope you continue to enjoy the content, and I will see you in the next one.